All right. Good morning, Brimfield Township. I'd like to call the Brimfield Township Board of Trustees emergency meeting to order on uh, May 21st at 10 a.m. Roll call for attendance, please, John. All those in attendance, Mike? Yes. Nick? Yes. Sue is absent, but we do have a full board. Sue is out of town. She couldn't make it today. We do have a full board, so okay. go ahead. All right, so we called this emergency meeting to order due to time constraints related to the fall community event and ensuring proper scheduling time. Um, so I guess on the agenda today, we'll start with the fall community event and discussions related to uh, agenda item one, date of the event. Um, there's been some concern related to the date of the event. Um, so we were looking at potential schedule proposal changes. Um, Cassie, do you have an update on that? Um, so we were looking at possibly the following weekend, the only, um, which would be the 17th and the 18th, the only conflict being balloon affair. Um, we can also look at the weekend after that. I don't know if there's anything going on the 25th or 26th. Well, the, okay, I will say, uh, Randy Porter, uh, the president or the vice president of the school board got back to me. Homecoming game is Friday, October 1st in the evening. And then the dance is Saturday, October 2nd. So we definitely need to stay away from that day. Okay. So, so I guess we need to make a, a motion for something so we can start discussing. Well, we need to approve the agenda first. Okay. So, um, Mike, you want to make that to approve it? We just have the so our, time. Our agenda is just uh, in other township business. Yes. Okay. So, so I'm going to make a, a motion that we approve the agenda. As presented. As I'll presented. second that. Okay. All those in favor, Mike? Yes. Nick? Yes. Okay, motion passed. All right, go ahead. Okay, so, so then we need uh, so, so we need a date to put on the floor. So I'll make a motion to schedule the Brimfield Township Fall Community Event to be changed from September 10th and 11th to September 17th and 18th. We need a second so that we can discuss. I'll second that. But Nick, uh, I think we need to some. Fall community event just sound reminds me so much of uh, your fall other event. Couldn't we just call it like fall community, aka Brimfest 101 or 102 or something? I'd like to just keep the name Brimfest somewhere so they know we're going to keep going. Whatever your thoughts are, just uh, I don't want to confuse them. There's two fall things now. Right. We just didn't want to. I. I... I kind of got the, the feeling at our meeting on Wednesday, we didn't want to call it Brimfest because Brimfest was, is typically ran by the chamber um, and the chamber wasn't um, overseeing this event here. So um, it's kind of need to keep the the intention, not confused with your other events. So let's just event. call it Brimfield Festival. Well, we can call it Brimfield Festival. I don't care what we call it. I just want to make sure we had some type of Brimfest event. And the idea was when we advertise this to ensure that we're advertising that you know, this is a scaled back Brimfest right. to, to prepare for 2022's full Brimfest um, because this allows us to test out the new areas um, that we had planned for. Right. Um, as many because there were some questions and concerns about the township not wanting to do Brimfest anymore when we had the expansion. However, that was part of our planning process. We had the water and electric lines ran to the soccer field on Kelso Road to ensure we still had Brimfest locations. Right. Well, that's that's good. So I think as we do our advertising and stuff for literature, we can always, you know, just put something that alludes to that, just so we keep Brimfest in their minds. So right. that's good. Uh, so now that we're we have a you second it, right? Yeah, I made the motion. You second it. Seconded. Okay. <clears throat> so, I mean, I guess we have two dates. I mean, what do you think? Do we? What do you think? Honestly, I. I, I like the earlier date um, instead of going two weeks past what our original proposal was, because I want to make sure we have enough time to prepare for the next festival, which is our fall festival, which is our, you know, our basically our opportunity for people to come have a bonfire and, you know, uh, hot dogs and whatnot and apple cider in, in the parks. That sounds yeah, good. I would agree with that. Okay, well then, so I think we need, while we're all here, I mean, let's go ahead and pass a motion for the date. And then other business, let's just sort of, Cassie had a few questions I think we should touch on, you know, because she is getting calls from vendors. And, uh, you know, when you have, 
a nonprofit versus a profit organization, I need we need we need to discuss that. So, so okay. I, I'm, I'm so ready the, to vote if you are. So the mo so the motion is on the floor to to move the date um, to September seventeenth and eighteenth. For Brimfield Festival, aka Brimfest uh, 2.0, um, from the original date of the 10th and 11th, roll call for. Um, and, and Nick, Nick, can we maybe yeah. go back just a second? While we're doing this, maybe let's establish the times. I was just thinking that too. Because now remember, we are not going to have lights up there, and we don't have the money to put lights up there. So I'm pretty, my thoughts and suggestions is it's uh, from the time we set to open till dusk. I mean, you know, after, after it's dark, everyone's gone anyhow, unless we're going to have a beer garden, which I don't see happening. I just think, you know, we do know it's 2.0 and we have to realize our limitations. So. Right. It looks like. Sunset. Yeah, I think. Is it seven thirty on uh, Saturday, September eighteenth? So, a so so what we'll do is we'll just sort of everything will be tight, you know, instead of having. Well, you know what I mean, the the only thing with that is going to be if we end up moving forward with the fireworks piece. Obviously, people would still be there at nine p.m. when fireworks go off because that's typically the fireworks time. I know we that that hasn't been set in stone. What? We wouldn't have to have provide electricity. Yeah, right, it'd yeah. be over and they could just stay around to watch the fireworks if we had it. Right. I mean, I don't know, Nick, with these uh with these food vendors, do they do they come with their own generators? Will they be providing lights? Well, <laughs> with the food vendors, remember that's part of the reason we ran the water and electric at the soccer field, so they have places to plug into because they need water supply uh, to meet the health department code. So, and we typically always provided some electricity too. And that's, that was part of the build of that soccer field was to provide those connection points there. Yeah, I just don't want to get into the mass confusion when Billy, Bob and his wife want to have a booth and they want us to provide electricity. And, you know, I mean, we are running this on a shoestring with the amount of people that are going to be helping. So we got to realize right. our limitations. Yeah. So I think what you could say is that the vendor sections are closing at, at sunset, um, but the midway may stay open longer depending on if we do the fireworks or not. That's just going to have to be a, a question mark for time at this point until we know what happens with the firework piece. Right. And I don't know what the lighting is. I don't I haven't you know. There might be some street lighting there. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah so there's some street lights back there. Um, we would have to look at what it would take to deploy some, there's mobile lighting units that you could potentially deploy that we could rent from uh, Sunbelt or somewhere like that. Could potentially be an option if we needed to. But I'd say let's wait and see what happens with the fireworks first. Okay, well, let's just, you know, what we have to really be, you know, because when she's marketing this and getting people to come in, she has to have some kind of guidelines as to when, you know, you can't tell someone, yeah, we'll be open till nine and then they show up and we have no lighting and and you know what that's going to happen. Right. Well, and I think that's where we tell <laughs> vendors, at least any vendors outside of the food vendors for sure, Sunset, we're not providing electricity to vendor booths. Yeah. So they'll pretty much like, well, we'll discuss that at the next part. So, okay. So. All right. So the motion's on the floor for the, uh, for the motion. Let's have a roll call vote um, to move the, the event to September 17th and 18th. Okay, all those in favor, Mike? Yes. Nick? Yes. Sue is absent. Motion passed. Okay, now the only thing with that is we got to make sure this is it. We can't change dates for anybody else's um, yeah, questions or anything else that comes up because we got to market this because we have, Kathy, we probably got two, two prime weeks right now to secure food vendors and secure uh, music. So I think uh, for the music, I would recommend that we're reaching out to Hometown Bank to see if they want to sponsor as part of this because they like this concert series. Um, and the food vendors, we just need to start calling people right away. Um, and those are going to be the two big pieces. Everything else we can figure out as we go. But we got to secure those two pieces. Yep. Top of my list. Okay. And so my second thing now, you know, Cassie has had phone calls. Uh, somebody from a t-shirt company or something. Yep. Um had a call from a band this morning already. Right now we're going to have to uh, 
I mean, if uh, my feelings and, you know, just jump in whenever, if it's a nonprofit, we just let them have a space. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if it's, it's a business that's for profit, I, I don't know, maybe we should be charging them. Now for the Chamber of Commerce, I don't want to, you know, get, you know, you know I, I want to include them. Now, I think since they are Brentfield Chamber of Commerce, maybe do we let them have their own space? But number one, they got to take care of their own tent. Uh, and, you know, I mean, we can probably provide limited electricity. It's kind of all we did at right. the other place. I mean, you know, but we're not, tents. I'm not worried about selling spots to the chamber. I mean, they're, I don't know. What's your thoughts? What's your thoughts, Cassie? I mean, I mean, really this, I, the whole idea here was to create an environment for community members to come down and see some local businesses, get some food, listen to music and have activities. So I, you know, I'm, I'm good with that. The, my only concern with giving free spots away is that we mark off spots for people and then they don't show. Um, a lot of the events that I've done through safety council and other councils here in the county, we find when we give free spots to people, you get a larger no-show rate when they compared to when they have some skin in the game of, hey, I paid 50 bucks or I paid 15 bucks, whatever it is, even if, it's a, even if it's a small amount, that often gets people to show up compared to, well, I didn't pay for it. I don't feel like doing it this weekend, so I'm just not going to come. That would be my only concern with, with the free so Maybe spot. they pay for it and, and then they get it returned to them if they, they show. show up. I like that. Yeah. And then, uh, Nick, I, I mean, we're not going to go to a lot of effort staking stuff out, but my thoughts are, you know, maybe one side of the road you're doing food vendors. Is that what you're thinking? And then the other yeah, side, I of, think, the, uh, then my, the other side of the view, road, we line the businesses. Yeah, and all the food vendors have to go on one side because we need to be able to give them the connection to water and electric, and it's only on the one side of the road right now. So um, that would be the food side right next to the soccer fields is where the food vendors would go. Um, and then also the music stage would be over there. And then the other side of the road could be um, obviously for vendors. And then um, we're going to need a location for activities, which is the soccer fields. That's, we, we just don't want any heavy equipment on that, but you could do bounce houses on that. You could do uh, potato sack races, whatever we want to do, whatever fun activities we can come up with. We just don't want any big trucks or heavy equipment sitting on that field so it settles for a year because we just had it graded and seeded. So it's going to take right. some time to Well, you got to remember what we talked about earlier, too. Kelso is wanting to be a part of this. They have land over there that we don't have to worry. Yeah. So if we needed to put well, stuff down there, that could all be a part of it as well. And part of my thought for Kelso House was, do you think we have time to pull together a car show and people could line up and see the cars at the Kelso house? Car shows are very hard and you have to pay for them. Right. They were going to do the flea market thing over there and make money because they're hurting for cash as well. Yeah, Nick, when you, whenever you get a car show, you have, you have to pay the promoter and they bring okay. it. The, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a, I, I did two car shows in the beginning when I, before I was elected. And I think when I was lucky, I got 11 cars. I still have a stack okay. of magnets from the first Mike's Place car car show up there. Well, and not that we're making this an old time festival, but I mean, you talked about potato sack races. You could have bobbing for apple, even though COVID, that's probably not a good thing. Pie eating, con those are all old fashioned things that you could coordinate right. with the Kelso House that could be running all those as the historical society. They could have lots of fun events like that down at their property. And it's all going to be so part of so maybe we do this. Maybe we have the Kelso House utilize um, part of their area for flea markets. Then we have normal business vendors on the street, the food vendors on the street, and then we have the soccer fields for all the activities that we're doing there um, for the community. And I think that just gives us a good spread down that whole road. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, all this stuff, we have to really make sure we remember we have limited staff. So we have to... Right. You know, well, and so the other piece we need to think about, Kathy, put this on your list. We need to contact the school and get an agreement for parking so that people can park at the school for the events. We should reach out to Cas Meadow for parking at the Cas Meadow property um, to give access. And, and then, Mike, do you think we can get a couple, uh, even if it's just two golf carts, so that we can help shuttle people that might need to be moved from parking lots like we've done in the past? Maybe, maybe, um, maybe. Uh, but another thing, Nick, 
I think we need to talk to uh, the skipper group. Remember, we have parked up in that uh, front lot in front of the school, and that's good parking there. Uh, it's not a good time to pop it in, I don't think. Either. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So I don't know. I mean, we, we, I mean, people will park wherever, but I, you know, we, we can't guarantee everybody parking. And I mean, the right. one thing for, well, you know, with, with, hopefully with Mike Casmeno, you know, they won't have all these trailers parked there. So maybe there'll be a little more parking there. Uh, right. I was talking to Jeff and uh, Julie. And Julie, he suggested uh, Myers or Menards sponsored the fireworks last year or the last time we did it at a cost of six thousand dollars and he thinks they might be receptive to doing it again okay well i think the the big hurdle with the fireworks first is we got to make sure that we have a place that we can display them from right. so i think craig is the one that had to work on that due to fallout from the shells making sure we're not too close to 76 um and making sure that we have good line of sight because they would be coming from the etson road park right uh, and then the, okay, so so the thing we're talking about, so we need to make a decision. So in reference to the spots, okay, so if it's a, an out-of-town business and they want to come in and sell their T-shirts, they're not part of our chamber, we have to have a fee. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it is a part of our chamber, we, we charge a deposit, and if they show up, they get their money back. Right. Well, we charge them the normal fee. But how did? But then we give the whole feedback if they don't show. Yeah, but see, I don't know what the if the chamber charged for spaces. They did. I believe they did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I, I can I can check with Jeff. I had to buy up. Did you? Yeah, because I had you got a general one, but if you wanted a bigger one, you had to buy up. Okay, but you know they were buying into their own. You know they had their own tent, mm -hmm. and not their tent, but we had we provided them a tent, tent, and we provide them provided them lighting inside, and we provided them electricity. Well, they got the lighting. It all came with the tent. They just needed somewhere to plug right. in. So, I just, I don't want to be the, the part of it that has to put lights up in a tent and tear them down. Maybe they're just giving the ability to plug it in. I just, and yeah. let them do all the rest. I would just let them take care of their own tents. And, uh, you know. I think you just said it, Mike. I think you said it at $25 a spot. Um, for any Brimfield business, meaning you, you operate here in Brimfield Township or you're a Brimfield Chamber member. Um, at the end of the event, you get your money back. If they take it, they take it. If they want to make a donation, they can make a donation either way. But we give them that we we will refund that. Any out of town place, obviously, then um, we would keep the twenty five dollars to help offset some costs. We are going to need to get a large tent, probably for the soccer field, because don't forget we're going to do the pancake breakfast on Saturday morning. Right. Um, for the best, and, and, that and that would, that would give people a place to sit and eat right. and those sorts of things throughout the day. Hopefully, we would have that close to the. Uh the stage you know so yep. they see whatever and the thing is while we're talking about this like i used to sponsor the the pie eating contest or the hot dog contest the thing we need to do is to pull people into this thing <clears throat> we can't have everything at night we have to have it spread out through the day and that brings right. yeah that was kind of um when craig and i and christy and uh, darlene talked we talked about <coughs> having a set schedule of events so that everybody knew if we had the kids stuff earlier in the day, adult stuff later in the day, then the parents would know, oh, we're only gonna be there from nine to 11 because that's the right. only thing we're interested in. Well, and my, my thoughts are by five o'clock, we are done with all the all the contests. That, yeah. And then after that, it's just a band, okay? Well, and remember too, we wanted to do some events and during a quiet time with no bands or DJs, be it from 10 to noon or 11 to noon, um, because that allows some of those those families that have those children that can't be around the loud noises that um, we, we create that that's that quiet hour per se so make sure that's on the schedule too okay well in the morning in the morning we'll get a a single guitarist and we'll have Mike and Nick's coffee hour <laughs> <laughs> Mike Nick and Sue Mike Nick and Sue I think we'll Nick, we're going to work on a song. It's hard to be humble. Okay. <laughs> I can write songs left and right. You got one to write now. <laughs> so, okay, that's good. So, so then my motion on the floor will have to be that. Well, we just, uh, did you write something up, John? It's going to be for, okay, there will be a deposit for any Brimfield business. Well, no, we just charge everybody 
the fee, no deposit. They just get it back if they show yeah, up. Yeah, but what, we are going to attract people from outside of the community. Right, but there would be a $25 <coughs> Brimfield Reds or Brimfield Township business or chamber member fee, a $50, whatever the fee is for non. Okay, that makes and sense. Then and then if the, you show up, the Brimfield residents right, get we'll the give money back. back. Okay, but if the, you don't show up, but if it's an outside vendor, yeah, we're okay. Not now, do they? What was the fee we wanted to charge? Twenty-five dollars for the the non Brimfield fifty. Okay. I mean, John, we're not, we're John gonna, would it be easier? Would it be easier just to make it twenty-five dollars across the board? So Kathy's not trying to figure out fifty yeah, for this person, twenty-five for that person. Just make it a flat twenty-five. Yeah, and then just it's it's returnable to Brimfield Township. So would it be okay? Business, but if they um, show. But if someone from outside of Brimfield would keep their twenty, right? Okay. Is it because those Brimfield Township businesses are paying taxes in town, okay. so they have. Is it just the nonprofits that get their money back, or all Brimfield businesses? Brimfield businesses I would, and not nonprofits, because I mean the churches will want to do this. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I would say anybody in Brimfield, because this is our way of giving back, especially post COVID. We okay. want to help Brimfield businesses advertise. And this is a way we can do it. And that's a great way. Well, in all those Brimfield Township businesses, if anybody outside, you, they all pay jet taxes to us. Sure. So they're already paying. Right. So that's their quirk. Right. The other people don't pay jet taxes to us. So, I mean, as far as you're concerned, I mean, could you just, do we just take a check and hold it? Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to put it in, take it out. You know, yeah, and we I mean? just don't want somebody renting three spots for 75 bucks and not showing up. And yeah. if they don't, we just keep their money. Right. Do we want to do just check then? Would that be better? Check your cash. We okay. got safes here. So. But then, you know, also, Cassie, you're going to really have to watch because who knows, maybe we'll get a lot in and we can only have so many people. Yeah, we can set a cap. Okay, do, so. Do we want to give priority to Brimfield? Yes, priority to Brimfield. Okay, maybe we can have earlier registration for Brimfield businesses I think open I'd, outside later. I'd take them as soon as you can. Okay. Like Nick said, we, we got a two week, two, three week period to get this thing going. Okay. Well, and I don't. I know we don't have a call on this, but they're doing. They're going to do the flea market over there. Do we kind of want to help set a price for that? I, I'd let them handle yeah. that. I yeah, I would. I would push well, the they can flea pick market. The and then what is happening? Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, we'll put it on our flyer and say if you if you are a flea market person, you need to contact the council house. They handle the money end of that. Okay. If you are a business, you contact Brimfield, and you'll be on the midway. Okay. Right. And, uh, and I mean, just to help the Kelso house, I think we should, as long as you don't mind, Cassie, just have them funnel through you. Sure. So there's one phone number to call mm -hmm. and then, but they have to handle it because I mean, that's going to be their gig and this will be ours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's my, make your second. And, and I'll, that. I'll second that motion. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, Mike? Yes. Nick? Yes. Sue is absent. Motion passed. Okay, and just uh, and Mike, Nick, uh, Nick, well, just so you know, Nick, I'm I'm gonna really help Kelsey with this because I've done a few of them. Yes. Or Kelsey. That's <laughs> Kelso and Kelsey. I'm sorry. I, I'm still at Mike's place. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have help Cassie with this, and I want to. We're gonna meet like every Monday to go through this, so we're all touch and I know you contact Cassie so we can all you know we can't meet all the time right. at the meeting but at least that way we're all and John's going to help we're just going to mm -hmm. funnel our ideas and I'm going to meet with Jeff and Julie because they're they have a ton of information so whatever they can help us through you know they're they're great people and I know they would uh, they'd be more than willing I just want to I really want to I know there's been talk about some people not wanting to honor the vets I don't know where that came from I, I can't you can't even understand that but I really want to right. make I really want to make this a, a good thing for the vets. So like the pancake breakfast will be no charge. If the cop or the right. police want to put out a, a boot or even or the fire or or Cassie put out a donation for the parks, maybe do that for one year. Mm -hmm. And and you know, we just want to honor them. I mean, there's not much we can do, but have pancakes, sausage, coffee, and just the time for them all to gather. You know what I mean? Right. Well, it's like it's like we do every year. I think it's a great event. I'm excited. 
that we're doing it. That was a big push from Craig and I that we had that pancake breakfast in the morning because that is our way to, you know, every year bring them together. It was sad we couldn't do it last year, but, you know, hey, it was COVID. There was not much we could do uh, a year ago, but I think we can pull it off this year. Right. So we, we need, as, as our advertising material goes out, we need to uh, to make sure people know that, that we, we're going to have that pancake breakfast. And I think it'll be, it'll be big. Did we settle on a time? For everything. Nick, what time did we start that breakfast last year? Was it six, seven? Seven o'clock. Seven a.m. Yeah. So Saturday will run from seven a.m. to uh, question nine. mark either sunset or fireworks, whatever whatever it may be. Um, on what? Friday, I I would say we don't even really kick this off till I'd say five p.m. or four four or five p.m. and then yeah, just that, go to that people sign up at four or get there and set up and five a.m. We'll have a Ceremonial ribbon cutting, cut, cutting, like we used to do. So, right. So on the seventeenth, we want to do seven a.m. to. No, eighteenth. Wouldn't it be? No, Saturday was the seventeenth. Oh, I got. It. Well, no, is Saturday, Friday, or Saturday. The seventeenth. So seventeenth, whatever day that is. Friday is the seventeenth. So okay. on the seventeenth, it will. Vendors can start setting up. I would give them more than an hour, Mike. I'd allow them to set up at 3 p.m. between you know, 3 and 4. You know, Nick, I don't even care when they set up. I'll take the day off, so I'll be there. Yeah, and it's going to be not right. gonna be there. We'll have the road closed for the whole day. Yeah, I have to play that, right. that but, evening, but so I, I might be able to play Saturday. Okay. Um, so, but the uh, ribbon cutting will be at 5 p.m. on the 17th to officially start the festival. And we'll run from 5 p.m. to, uh, we'll call it 8 p.m. 8.30, I mean, because it's going to be getting dark by that point. Um, but that way, people can come down for music and food on Friday night. Then Saturday, we'll, uh, the pancake breakfast starts at 7 a.m., um, but I wouldn't start activities until probably 11 a.m. or 10 a.m., somewhere in there. Well, well it, Nick, it'd be good to have one right after the pancake breakfast because you've got all those people there. Well, a lot of those <laughs> right. people get out to the the – the yard sales and all that stuff early in the morning on Saturday. So if they're doing the flea market and all that, that kind of. I mean, yeah. So, so the pancake breakfast, I'm thinking if I remember right, I mean, we should maybe go seven to nine 30. Cause remember we yep. started shutting down and there's all these people coming in. Yep. And maybe we could uh, just while we're brainstorming is maybe contact the VFW, see if they want to bring up some kind of military vehicle, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> if we had some military vehicles, that would be sort of neat. Well, why don't we just yeah. instead of just having that, why don't we just make it 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. or until fireworks or whatever? Okay. okay. Yeah, I would say temporarily, let's call it 8 p.m. If we have fireworks, we'll leave the midway open only um, from 8 to 9, 9 p.m. so that people could still get food or whatever while they're waiting for the fireworks to go off at 9 p.m. Okay, that's good. Okay, is there anything else, Kelsey? Or Kelsey? <laughs> That's my new name. Um, um, one other thing for the bands, Mike, are we best try? Do you have a contact where we can get a get a trailer so we can put them up on there and, and a PA the, system? How are we going to handle that? The best thing is uh, there's a guy named Bill Johns. He, he's done it for us before, but we'll, it'll cost some money. Uh, a lot of bands have their own sound stuff, but but we are going to need some kind of PA system. But then. Aren't you buying a PA system? We have one. Yeah, it's actually in my office. We can go look at it. After. Okay. Nick, the best thing to save us money is the bands have to provide their own sound. Okay. I mean, believe me, we all love plug and play gigs, but every band has their own sound system. I mean, do we want to go to the expense of a few thousand dollars to do this? I mean, it would be nice if we could get a, a trailer. A semi, I mean, but it's what's what's hard is if it's a hot evening or a hot day and you're up on a metal trailer, it's it's what we could do is just okay. get a tent. Why don't we just clear out the tent that we were gonna use for the tanking? Right? Yeah, if we have a tent, we rent, you know, I might even be able to get us a floor. Let me do some checking. Well, that's big I just want to be able to get them up off the ground. And well, you have, electric, you have right? to have a sound equipment and you have to have it covered because, you know, September, it can be a wet month. Mm -hmm. So I think right. John's idea is great. We'll get we'll get. A so floor. we just need to get a pretty we we'll have to get a pretty large tent. Then let me, so let me get hand, some distance. Right. 
well, let me handle the sound stuff. But I think any band, we should tell them that it's going to be not a plug and play. Okay. With that said, then, Cassie, you're going to have to, if we do two bands on Saturday, you're going to have to space out time between them for setup and teardown. You need a half an hour to tear down, and the other band's going to need every bit of a half an hour to get started. You but but you know what you areas? could do in between, Nick? While the other band is getting up there, you could just get a, si a single guitarist and have him play through a teeny little system. You know, just because everyone's not going to want to hear full bands, you know? Right. Uh, you know, so, and maybe that's what we do. We run a band at, you know, maybe we do, because we had talked about a DJ possibly in the earlier part of the day when there's not a lot of people there just playing some music. Then you bring a band in and then you have a single player. Um, there's that, what was that girl's name that's from Brimfield? She did a really Emily, good job. Emily Gamb Gambasini. She's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, let me, let me help her with the music because I, I know about everyone in the area. So uh, it'd be nice if, I don't know if, uh, Bill Parthy's still playing. He has that R River City Jazz, which is really, you know, the older people would love that because he plays New Orleans-style jazz music. It's all the upbeat, the Saints go marching in, that kind of stuff. But let me, right. on Monday, you and I can talk about bands. Okay. The, the thing is, as a board, are we going to sponsor these bands? I mean, that means we well, have to pay them, or are we going to let businesses sponsor them? Well, that's why I wanted her to first reach out to Hometown. Let's see if we can get them to sponsor a band series or, you know, any sponsorships we can get would be great. You know, it's just an advertising for that business. So that's why I said, really, we got two weeks to figure out sponsors, food vendors, all of that, so that we can start advertising this event. Because when we advertise it, if, you know, ABC sponsors a band, we should have their name on right. the marketing material. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's... Uh... Okay, well, we're good. I mean, we at least we have a good outline to get started. You know, I just, I just, I don't want to leave Cassie out on her own. I just, it's a lot to pull together and you're doing a great job. At least if I can offer you some advice and Nick and, I mean, this is a lot for just one person, you know, because I mean, Jeff and Julie work nonstop on this. I mean, hour upon hour upon hour. Or are they going to work in coordination with us and do some of that stuff? I mean, well, Jeff, did you I, get Darlene and yeah, Cassie to do it too? So, oh, I know, I know there will be people that help us, but there has to be a central figure, and Cassie, you'll have to be it. Yeah. And you know, and Nick and I and Sue and then all of us will help you. So we just need you to start gathering all this information up as much as we can, and and let's hope for the best. I mean, we'll do all this work, and we'll have a month soon. So, <laughs> Nick, the, one, the first one of these I ever did three years before I got elected, was the Brimfield Music Festival. We had one tent, we had three rides, and it rained, it hailed, and it snowed in the same day. I was playing guitar with gloves. Nice. And for all 12 people that showed up for it. <laughs> but it's all good. I think uh, we, we really have a, a good musician in the fire department. I don't know if any of you know that. Uh -uh. Uh, I can't remember if it's Sessions. Connor. Scott yeah. Taylor and Connor Sessions are both musicians. They are amazing. Yeah. They have a they have an old band. Or, boy, it'd be neat if I would love nothing more than to have one of them play. You know, have just you know, just sort of you know help you know put things together. I think it'd be nice, and I think we can get the music. The music's the easy part because every right. band hasn't played in a long time. Right. <laughs> well, and, and honestly, so I, you know, just to circle back as we end this meeting here, um, main focus, Cassie, number one, food vendors, number two, working with Mike on Monday on the band, but food vendors are going to be booking up fast knowing that the governor's orders are getting lifted on June 2nd. So those are the, those are the people we got to start knocking on everyone's door um, as fast and as quick as we can so that we can secure people. I would try to get a mix of things too. We need to have um, maybe some type of dessert vendor or popcorn vendor, a French fry person, right? Because everybody wants to come for the fair fries. Um, and then one or two food uh, people, Kettle sandwiches, corn. whatever it may be. <coughs> yeah. Anybody know the um, people in Randolph? They're awesome. No, but you should go talk to the um, Dussels. They have okay. their little fall festival and they have a couple of vendors that are there. And they, so have they, the they, have, they have the popcorn people, yeah. Okay. And if we can find some neat food trucks, Kathy, I think that's going to help with advertising too. I know over in Akron, 
um, by uh, Swenson's, by Chapel Hill Mall, that's Swenson's over there. Yeah. You go past Swenson's like you're going into Akron, there's a Dollar General, a Dollar Tree on the left-hand side. There's a huge food truck that's always busy there. So that, you might want to stop and talk to them. Um, and then there's Southern Comfort Food is set up in Kent in front of the movie theater. Okay. So those are two local food trucks that are always around. They just kind of have semi-permanent spots. Maybe getting them to come up. That Those might be local people that you could quickly get to and talk to about this. Okay. Um, do we want to, do we know how many, like what's the max amount of food trucks we want? That street's long. I know you just want to make sure you have enough people, enough room, enough people to help make them some money. Well, but when they do that, they're not grand off and they just have them. They just advertise they're going to be there and people just show up to go to the food trucks. So Yeah, I know when Talmadge does their food truck festival, Talmadge is, is super busy. Um, people, there's, you know, ridiculous lines to get to these food trucks. So if you get more than just carnival food and you get food trucks, you're probably going to get a pretty big draw of people just coming for food trucks too. Okay. Yeah, Talmadge, I guess, is no is not having their circle festival this year. Mm -hmm. They cancel it. That's so that's so we'll, we'll work. I'll help her with a lot of that. So, I mean, I think we're good. At least, I guess we should have been a little more clear when we did this at the meeting, but you know, we're all learning. We are going to need the road workers. We, you know, trash is always a big issue. Set up and tear down if Set we're going to be doing the pancake just, breakfast and moving it over. Yeah. yeah I mean, so, so Dave's going to have to realize that we're going to need their help. Right. You know, because we're right. all, you know, Nick and I we're, and John work full time, and so does Cassie. Well, but and they do too, and that's part of our their job, right? Right through the township stuff. So if we put them on the I just clean think, up garbage that day to pick up the garbage cans. That's just part of their. I know. I know people don't want to hear this, but I'm just. I tell you, I think as this Brimfest proceeds, there's going to be a point. It's hard to get volunteers to do this, it you is. know. And I mean, Jeff and Julie put their business on hold for all that time while they, you know, they donated their right. time for this. And so, I mean, we need to. Nick, as we move forward, we got to create a model that is going to keep it going after you and I are gone. You know, which is, right. I mean, it's, it's so important that Brimfield gets together. And, and right, this right. is this is our is our job at, as trustees to create goodwill and time for you to get out with your neighbors. Well, and it so, doesn't have Well, that was the whole idea for us of the all. town center district is, right. is with the soccer fields and the town center district is creating this environment for everybody to come together. So, you know, this is, this is a good, we'll call it a dry run for, for 2022 where it'll be even bigger. But. And, it's a, and it's a great way for us to get our message out. I mean, like I, right. I, Jeff gave me a suggestion. We need to put a tent together where we answer questions about our new fire station, our new administration building. I mean, we walk 10 right. people over there and look through the fence and try to explain it to them, you know? I mean, for us to, sh to teach people about our town center concept. And right. I think you, somebody said, contact Todd Pease, get him up here with our land use plan. You know, let's, yep. let's use this time for educational, you know? I wonder if we could set yep. up like a PowerPoint <coughs> presentation that just like scrolls of pictures of the construction of the town hall, rather than walk everybody through the construction. There site. might not be anything going on, but- Are there, Well, maybe pictures of the renderings and stuff. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah I think we can get some, um, we'll set some TVs up because we'll have electricity over there for us. And we can have some things scrolling over there off a laptop or whatever. and. You know, I think all of us are going to have to take turns working a booth for the township, you know, I mean, between, um, you know, the trustees. But I think we also have enough staff. John, I think I hopefully I can volunteer your staff to work that weekend. They're going to be there. Um, you know, yeah, so we'll just rotate I mean, covering the tables. It's going to be a lot easier with these limited hours. You know, when you were trying to do Thursday to Sunday, that's a, a, that's a big piece. Yeah. Right. You know? And personally, I mean. I don't know. I think maybe a you know maybe a two day event's nice, but the only problem with that is it's hard to get carnival vendors. Right. But then you have all these complete people complaining about how expensive the carnival rides are. So you know. Well, but I mean, let's see how this works. I I really like the old idea of an old fashioned event. I you know we're doing the family you know challenges and games together. Who knows? Maybe next year we add a softball game or a kickball game to it. We get people involved and. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things we can do without doing carnival rides. Well, so I, I think there's, like, there's a like, lot of good opportunity here. I would like to see a lawnmower race. <laughs> you know? I'd like to see, what about we have the fire department hook up two hoses 
and who can knock each other off their <laughs> feet the first? <laughs> all kinds of fun things you can do. So it's all good. But hey, Nick, just a suggestion. Let's make sure we leave Brim, whatever we're going to call this, on the agenda every week, so we can force ourselves to go through this. Because we well, and that's where it comes. That that was the whole idea when I added old business to our agendas. Were open items, not for people just uh, to say, oh, it, it's on my item list. It was open items that we need to discuss that just haven't been completed. So That's I think good. it just needs to be plugged under Parks and Rec under old business. <laughs> yep, yeah, so just keep keep us going on this. Yeah. Keep us focused. Um, That's a great movie, Nick. <laughs> the Goonies. The Goonies I, is my favorite movie as oh. a kid. And I just I, heard I, they're I, releasing a board game. Let's have a movie theater up there. Let's 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 it's show a movie. That's at night. expensive, though. Yeah, uh, it's like fifteen hundred. It's about bucks. fifteen hundred bucks. Oh, okay, that's a lot. Well, too. depending on the movie. You that's get. right. I forgot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I get... If you get a, uh, some movies are free of licensing after a certain amount of years. So I was looking into for like the Fall Harvest Festival. Um, well, what about the Goonies? No, not the Goonies. I'm sure that one's expensive. That's a but great like movie. older movies like Night of the Living Dead is free to show. Oh yeah, the kids would love that. Yeah. Um, what was the other one? House on the Haunted Hill, like the original one. Uh, All yeah. those have Attack of the Killer. As long as you take yeah. the phone calls from the parents, yes, the kids are up screaming. Absolutely. Screen night. <laughs> okay. Well, I got. I got to get back. Okay. So. One thing I would like to do though is set up the time to do a site visit. So we can, I'm a very visual person. So if we could go out there and just say, here's where this is going to be. Here's where everybody's going to line up. We can do that. Okay, because I'm going to, I want to come up and meet you. So, okay. So let's, between you and I, we'll make a time up. No, give me your, whatever suggestion you want. Okay. Let, let everybody else know if they want to all just meet there. Okay. I think it'd be good if we get the, as many of us together as we can. Because we work better when we all bounce ideas off each other. Yeah. Okay. Nick, what about you? You got any time on Monday? Give me one second here. Let me check my phone. I'm here eight to four, but I can move that. If you well, I'm up at six, so. I can move. If you bring Starbucks, I'll be there. <laughs> um, Monday the 24th looks pretty open for me. And my wife is off, so she has the kids. So, um, but for my work schedule, either in the morning was good. We do early. Or any time after three is good. So what's, we did early, like uh, seven a.m. early for you, Nick? Well, I mean, I'm up at five a.m. every day, but I don't think anybody wants to go out there in the dark. So seven a.m. would be good. Seven or eight a.m. Or um, if we do something in the afternoon. Yeah, eight's fine. Afternoon's tough for me on a Monday. Okay. Eight o'clock. So we do eight a.m. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So we'll meet over there. Yep. Sounds good. So you three, I can't make. It. Okay. Well, you know me. I'll, I'll let you know what's going on. Yeah, you can just look out the window. One. All right, I'll wait at you guys. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and and we might want to let Craig. Uh, well, yeah. Craig definitely needs. Maybe to Dave that. too. Yeah. Okay. So we're not making any decisions. We're just walking around. We're just so it's yep. not. A, it's not a trustee meeting. We're just visualizing the site. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Can make sure we keep the. Castle House involved. Yes, they yeah, definitely I definitely want to be involved in all that. I can so, so maybe to today you can give her, her, can you call Darlene and give her give her an update what we're talking we talked sure. about here? Maybe okay. I think of some old fashioned games. Since they're the old fashioned I already told Craig we have to have a pie eating contest and that he's got to participate and so do the trustees. So <laughs> Oh hell no, I'm diabetic. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to kill me off. <laughs> 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 okay, well then I'm going to go ahead and make a motion, Nick, to end this meeting. All right, I'll second that. Okay, all as a favor, Mike. Yes, Nick. Yes. Sue is absent. We are done at 10:44. Okay, well,